Today in the news, Nvidia might make a GPU obsolete and AMD makes a statement. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. As we've seen in the past few weeks, it seems like the company is testing many configurations of their GPUs, likely because AMD was able to show how strong their new RDNA 2 architecture is. There were two versions of the 3070 Ti and one extra version of the uh, RTX 3080. Also, while the release date was never confirmed by the company, the 3060 Ti was allegedly supposed to be released on November 17th and is now delayed to December 2nd. So where is Nvidia now? What are they currently testing? Well, according to legendary leaker copied 7 kimmy over on Twitter, Nvidia is about to almost kill the need for an RTX 3090 with a new SKU allegedly called the RTX 3080 Ti. How would it kill the 3090? Well, let's compare the alleged specs of the upcoming card to the 3090. The 3080 Ti would have 10,496 CUDA cores, which is the exact same number as the 3090. It would also support 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X as opposed to 24 for the 3090. Besides the 4 gigabytes of VRAM, the main difference would be the memory speed at 19 gigabits per second instead of 19.5 for the 3090 and the lack of NVLink in the 3080. TGP would be the same as the 3080 at 320 watts. Now, if this 3080 Ti does come to fruition, the 3090 becomes irrelevant for gaming. SLI is pretty much dead and 4 gigabytes of VRAM at that level won't make a significant difference, which brings us to the price. We don't actually know it, but if I had to guess, Nvidia will want to position themselves within the RX 6900 XT at the 999 price point. But since according to the leaks, AMD's cards have very impressive overclocking potential, I'd say they might want to go for a more conservative price point. Maybe that'll be able to spark a GPU price war and we might get these cards for 899, who knows? So what do you guys think about that possibility? possible 3080 Ti? Let me know down below. Speaking of conservative price points, the specs, or at least the specs in testing for the upcoming RTX 3060 and 3050 Ti have finally emerged in the Lecosphere. Once again, this information comes from copied 7 kimmy and the RTX 3060 would sport 3,840 CUDA cores, and the RTX 3050 Ti would have 3,584 CUDA cores. For VRAM, there were rumors of 6 gigabytes for the 3060, that's the standard one, not a Ti, and the 3050 Ti would also also have 6 gigabytes, but with AMD's push towards higher VRAM amounts, that might change in the future. Given that this segment sells so much more in the $250 to $400 price point, what do you guys think of 6 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes of VRAM instead of let's say uh, 8 or probably 12 from AMD? Let me know down below. Next up, we got 3D Mark. The company has just revealed their first fully ray traced benchmark for their suite. Now, you might be saying, but isn't that Port Royale? Well, no, Port Royale still uses hybrid rendering, whereas this new test is pure DXR ray tracing. Tom's Hardware benchmarked a few RTX cards on the test, and it looks like the last generation of RTX cards could barely crack the 30 FPS barrier. The new RTX 3000 series, though, managed to stay above 30 FPS on average. At least for the 3070 and up, while the 3090 goes as far as 55 FPS. If this is how taxing fully ray traced scenes are in late 2020, I don't see a fully ray traced game that is not Minecraft or Quake RTX for at least the next four to five years. At least hybrid rendering seems to allow for quite a nice result without killing current gen performance. It's going to be interesting to see how AMD GPUs compare in tests like these though, as well as in hybrid rendering. Speaking of AMD, the company has made a statement about its ray tracing support. The company said, and I quote, AMD will support all ray tracing titles using industry-based standards, including the Microsoft DXR API and the upcoming Vulkan ray tracing API. Games making use of proprietary ray tracing APIs and extensions will not be supported. Now, that last part is pretty important. As is, it means all titles that use DXR ray tracing will be supported. That includes fully ray traced Minecraft RTX, as well as hybrid titles like Control, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, etc. It also means it will support hardware agnostic ray tracing, such as CryEngine's ray tracing. When AMD says that they won't support proprietary ray tracing APIs and extensions, it really only means that it won't support features slash extensions created for specific hardware, such as DLSS for uh, upscaling. As for denoising though, 
it's a little bit of a gray area. Technically, NVIDIA's real-time denoising should still be supported by AMD since all it needs is SM 5.0 support, but it is a NVIDIA developed technology. So will AMD support it? I hope so. I mean, AMD does support SM5, which means we shouldn't worry. Current games that offer ray tracing should work just fine. Oh, and one more thing. Before you say that you don't care about ray tracing, like I saw so often in a past video, that's okay. If you don't, you don't. But please don't say that no one cares because there's a big enough community that cares about it, or at least the industry is simply moving towards it. It should be enough that graphics technology in PCs and consoles are making it standard. So yeah, except for Nintendo. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about how my beard got a lot smaller. <laughs> Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Take care. You know it right.